Welcome back to Jatai Academy. Today we're going to be doing a long taper on some pretty curly hair, so I want to check it out first to make sure there's not any major calyx or anything sticking out. And then we're going to separate the top from the bottom by taking a parting from the center of the recession straight back to the quarter part. Pin that hair out of the way. And then we're going to go from the quarter part down to the uh, mastoid, maybe just above the mastoid, so it splits off the top of the head from the bottom of the head. Just trying to get my parting as clean as I can, and sometimes I'll have to go back in and, and fine tune it a little bit, especially on curly hair. So you got to make sure that I'm very clean with my partings and very diligent with all my sectioning because it really matters in making the shape fit the head. So I'll do the, the same thing on the other side and try to get both sides to match as closely as possible. Now the thing about dealing with curly hair that I really have to pay attention to is how I approach it. And on shorter hair, I'm going to approach it from a standpoint of maximum tension. On longer hair, I can do minimum tension, but on shorter hair, I really need to be able to grab it and get a good grip on it. So I have to use as much tension as my fingers will give me to try to keep my cut as consistent as possible. Now I'm gonna go through here and start on the sides and I'm gonna start doing a little clipper over comb. And the idea behind the clipper over comb is I'm taking it really short over the ear and angling up longer towards my parting. So I wanna to try to get about a 45 degree angle with the comb as I start short at the ear and then gradually start to build up in my length as I get closer to the parting. Now, when I'm doing this type of clipper over comb work, there's really you know, no guide that I'm following. I can't really follow a specific guide because the hair curls and whirls and, and flips and dips all over the place. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just using the force. You know, I'm just using uh, my best educated guess to go ahead and cut my taper into it. You know, and a taper is really nothing more than graduation where I'm going from short around the edges and slowly stacking the hair up to a longer length at top. And you can really see here where I'm starting low, really close, and then as I go up the head, I get further and further away. And it's basically just guesswork here, and it's just me getting into a rhythm of doing my clipper over comb work as I start to go up the back of the head. And I cut what I feel is the right length leaving it a little longer if I'm a little worried, and then going back in and cleaning that up. I just want to get a basic shape with my clipper over comb work so that I can start to fine tune it later. And this is really more about just getting it really close and short around the edges so I can start to taper that in pretty close. Just cleaning up a little bit around the edges and trying to set in a, a, a line right around the edges of the hairline. And, and just basically cleaning it up as much as I can. Now, when the hair has been, you know, when the hair is curly, the longer that it is, it's going to react differently than when it gets shorter. So I'm just cutting in a basic shape here because as soon as I shampoo his hair, it's going to completely change. So I don't want to try to get too perfectionistic about the haircut right now. I just want to go through and get a solid strong shape into it. And I can continue to fine tune that later because after I shampoo it, it's going to change. Working around his mask. Now in the back here, I'm going to add an attachment and I'm going to start tapering it in even closer. The comb will only get me so close. So by putting an attachment on it, I can start to get that taper in really tight and really close in the nape. So I'll start with a large, this is a, I think a one and a half, 
And then if I need to, I'll open the blade, which means I move the cutting teeth of the blade further away from the guide teeth. And that makes a softer cut and leaves it a little longer. And you see right there, I just push that guard in. So now it's much closer and much tighter. So it gets a little bit shorter and cleaner. And as I feel that I get this fit in like I want, now I'll move down to a, a number one. Now number one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to open the blade up, open the guard up. So it's a little bit softer and a little longer. And I won't go up quite as high as I had with the one and a half. And now I'll tighten it in and go down a little bit lower and a little bit lower. The more patient I am with the steps of the, of the uh, guards here, the closer and the smoother that I can get my taper. So now I've moved down to a, a one half and I'll start to go down even a little bit closer and a little bit tighter. So each step that I take with my guards, I'm not going as high and I'll go closer and closer and make smaller and smaller sections as I, I run the clipper across the, the hair and the hairline. Now here I'll tighten the blade up all the way and I'll go in reverse. I'll just run the clipper down as opposed to going up and this will help knock off any little edges that might be in there and just allow it to fit in a little bit tighter. Now I'll take the last guard off and I have an open blade, no guard on it at all. So I have to be very careful and just etch around that hairline just to blend it in and make it softer and a smooth transition from no hair into hair. Now after we've shampooed, I've gone and washed it. We've shampooed him, his hair is actually wet now. I'm going to go back and retake the initial sections that I took, which was separating the top from the bottom. And I'll take an angle parallel to the front hairline. And then I'm just going to follow what the line was already there from my clipper over comb work. And I'm just going to tighten it up. So I'll take each section at an angle, which is going to be parallel to the front hairline, which is parallel to that hairline directly behind the ear. And I'm going a little bit tighter down towards the nape, a little bit longer at the top of the parting. And each section is walking, so it's going into the previously cut section as I continue to work my way back. And don't cut yourself. <laughs> I keep trying to cut myself here. So just cut whatever hair sticks out. I'm not trying to make this absolutely flawless and perfect, but I am using a lot of tension to try to get a really clean line on it. And as I go through and I start to take my sections and cut, I want to notice is it getting cleaner and is it getting tighter? Is there anything that's sticking out like it shouldn't be? And then I can be mindful of that and go back in and fine tune that. So each step that I'm working, it's going from a more crude shape and I'm fine tuning it into a tighter and tighter shape with each step that I'm going. Now this here is tightening up my scissor, my scissor, my clipper over comb work. And after I do this, I'll continue to fine tune it until it's as perfect as I want to go. So a taper, again, is just shorter around the edges, longer towards the top, and I want to be mindful of that. I'm using my six inch Kyoto scissors from Tatai, which have a really good point that help a lot when cutting curly hair with a lot of tension. Continuing to follow through all the way to the center of the back. Here I'm just checking it out and seeing if there's anything that doesn't fit and so right there, the way that his hair is curling, I need to fit that in a little bit tighter. And since it's short and I can't grab it with my hands, I'll scissor over comb it just to fine tune that hair there, which on the left side curls a little differently than his hair does on the right side. And scissor over comb is just fine tuning and slowly making the shape tighter and tighter and tighter. And by tighter, I don't necessarily mean shorter. I just mean more and more perfect. After I finish this side, I'll do the exact same thing on the other side. After I finish both sides, now I'm going to separate the front half of the head from the back half of the head. And I'm going right across the crown to where, uh, right behind the ear where the mastoid is. I'll separate a pie section right in the center of the back. And then I'm going to hold this straight out from the head. And you'll notice that the angle of elevation that I had from my taper underneath, I'm going to continue that up and out. It's important that I maintain more length at the top of the section 
then at the bottom of the section even even as I start to go up the back of the head I want to make sure that the hair is continuing to get longer now after I finish the center section I'll pivot from the top of the head out towards the right going towards the corner of the hairline and then comb that into the center of both of those sections the center section which was my guide and the new section have combined to now make one section I'll cut in the center of those I'll remove the center section here and then continue on as I work around the head pivoting from the top of the head and going towards the front and I want to make sure that I'm pivoting at key points so that I can match it on both sides so I went from the center of the head down and then the first section was to the corner of the hairline now it's going right to the mastoid which is that bump right behind the ear and I'm following the guide that I cut in the center combing each section back into the previously cut section and just following whatever that guide was trusting my guide knowing that I want it to blend in the back but then as I get to the sides it doesn't have to blend if I don't want it to maximum tension making sure everything is pulled as straight as I can get it if I don't pull it with maximum tension I'm not going to be able to get a very clean cut on shorter hair and as it grows it's going to grow really really lumpy I'll do the same thing on the other side to make sure everything blends now I will go through and take a parallel section to the section that I first started with which was separating the top of the head from the bottom of the head now I'll take a parallel section and I'll blend the short piece right there to whatever length he has in the front so I'm going to pull this straight out from the head I see my short length in the back and then I'm going to start guessing at what that long length is in the front so I'm going to leave it a little longer and then as I start to work forward I'll see where my long piece is and I can fine-tune and blend that into the back combing this straight out from the head making sure everything blends now you start to see my length in the front there that's going to be my guide for the front and I start to blend that through and fine fine tune that through I could have just started this section off cutting from the front going back but I don't have very good luck with making my angles smooth so I much rather go through and cut it a couple of times on that first section and fine tune and make sure I get that angle the exact angle that I need it to be whereas having to guess from the front going back this way I can slowly start to whittle it down until it is the perfect angle that I need now here I'm going to comb this straight out from the head towards me I'm not going to hold it down I want to make sure that I'm holding this up in elevation and not down following the guide from underneath maximum tension making sure everything's as clean as I can continuing on until I start to run out of hair and I will continue each section up until I get to the center part of the head and then I'll do the same thing on the opposite side but the thing about curly hair is you have to uh, use a lot of tension and you can't be afraid of it knowing that when I cut it it's going to shrink so I tend to leave it a little longer than I think I need so that, that way it gives me a little bit of slop factor and I can check it as I go to make sure I don't end up cutting all the poor guy's hair off now here you can really see that my elevation is going straight from the top of his head over I'm not holding it down I want to continue that elevation up high and strong and proud once I do that side do the other side make sure everything blends through and it's nice and smooth and I don't have a whole bunch of lumpiness through it now around the front I'll take a, a section straight across the front of his head and I'm going to comb that straight down and all I want to do here is cut the corner off that I cut into it by holding it from left to right so when I separate the head in half and I hold everything to the left and I hold everything to the right it's going to leave it longer in the center on top I don't mind it so much because it gives me a little bit more fullness there but around the front I don't want it to look like it's going to a, a, a DA you know kind of a point in the front I mean if he's going for that rockabilly thing 
then yes, I definitely want to leave that, but he's not. So I'm going to go through and blend that corner in right off the front to make sure it's not too exaggerated. And I'll just continue with my sections back until I completely run out of hair and no hair reaches. Here, just shaking and making sure everything blends smoothly. And now afterwards, I put a little curl cream on him and make sure all the curl is engaged and looped in and clumped in together as much as I can. I'll go through and diffuse it. And while it's wet, I don't want to disturb it too much. As it starts to dry, then I'll shake it more to give it a more lived in natural kind of look. But I don't want to shake it too much when it's wet or in that transition from wet to dry. Thank you so much for checking this out. Please check out the Jatai Academy for all kinds of educational information that can help you become a better hairdresser. Also, leave a comment for anything that you'd like to see in the future, and we'll see you next time.